Jury Visual Arts Show for the 60th year, the 60th year of the Three Rivers Arts Festival. And I want to say a special thanks to the fact that it's now the Dollar Bank Three Rivers Arts Festival. For 10 years, the Cultural Trust has been producing the Dollar Bank Three Rivers Arts Festival. We're going to be hearing more about that in just a second. But this year, we're featuring 52 works of art the jury uh, show, and as you can see, it's a great, great exhibit. And it is my pleasure tonight to introduce Jim Quay. Jim is the president and CEO of Dollar Bank. So we have the really big guy here tonight. Jim, thank you so much for Dollar Bank's tremendous support. So it must be summer in Pittsburgh because tonight kicks off the Dollar Bank Three Rivers Arts Festival. In my mind, this festival means it's a start of summer. It is my pleasure to introduce you to the Director of Festival Management, Ms. Sarah Z. Sarah? So, where did you draw inspiration from for this piece? Yeah, most of the work I did for this show, this one and the one around there, yeah. has to do with remembering the, um, the riots in Baltimore. Because I actually live and work in Baltimore. I, work, I live here, but I work in Baltimore. I teach at an art college down there. Uh -huh. And I, I drive through, like, ground zero, where this took place, you know? And, like, years afterwards, I still drive through, and this, the, the, the place still looks the same. But people have moved on, like the media has moved on, you know, and like I kind of wanted to remember it because I, I see how the, the place is still being like going down, 
you know, but we're just not having a riot, so there's no focus on it, you know, so, yeah. I don't know, sometimes I try to use my art to, like, shed a light or put focus back on something, you know. Yeah. That's why it's, it's surprising to me, because a lot of times I kind of rub people sometimes the wrong way with the world, but, you know, to win an award for it was, was kind of like icing on the cake, you know, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and is, so much it, I can is this your first time here at the uh, jury selection? Yes, it is. Wow. It is. It's the first time. Um, I, I actually have been living in, in Pittsburgh a few years, and about six years. But it's my first time actually taking part in the, in the art, in the art, like culture. Art, yeah. You know, most of the stuff I would do is in Baltimore. Okay. Yeah. And was so being an artist something you always do you want to do, or is this yeah. relatively a new chapter for you? No, right? this has always really? been what I wanted to do. Really? I actually, um, I want a scholarship. I'm from Trinidad, okay. and I want a, I want a full scholarship to, to study in, in, in Maryland. Oh, yeah. And like, since I've been here, I just kept going from strength to strength. And I'm, I'm actually a, a professor down in uh, the Maryland State College of Art. That's why, I, you know. Is yeah. most of your art protest art? Pretty much. You know, a lot of, yeah. a lot of, I do a lot of other stuff. You know, I do a lot of video, a lot of other work. But the ones that I show tends to be, uh, I tend to, recently I started using it as a, as a podium to kind of like put my voice forward on issues because a lot of time I feel like some of the media that we see it's either like sensational or just short lived, you know. So. Some art scholars now say that yeah. something like 60 to 70 percent of the art in Rome was protest art. Yeah, yeah, a lot of them. A lot of the Renaissance work was, you know. Um, one guy I like a lot is Caravaggio, and I actually went to Rome to see a lot of his paintings. And he, I mean, the guy's life was crazy. So like, yeah. it's, I don't know, I just, I love art, I love painting, and I love the Renaissance period, you know. For the way they, they would like, the body tried to like, em, you know, evoke emotions and stuff, so. And I'm not trying to be a Renaissance painter, but it's it's a it's a time I like, you know. Yeah. All right. How's it feel to be a winner? I'm t it's kind of now sinking in because you know I was yeah. coming up here and my wife kept saying, you know, I feel good about this. I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's nice. It's a nice accolade to take. Layla, one of the jurors at Dollar Bank's Three Rivers Arts Festival. Hi. Can you tell me about the process of choosing the artworks, choosing the winners? Okay, so sure. I was asked to be a juror last year, last winter, and I said yes, of course, because um, I always like to discover new art and travel to new cities in the, the country. So um, we received a whole lot of submissions, different media, different um, interpretations of the theme, which you remember me, and looking at the anniversary of the Pittsburgh. Um, Rivers, Rivers Art Festival, sorry. And so it was really tough and I took my time. I took about a month to look at the works and really look at uh, why the artist was creating what they were creating, their process, and um, try to interpret the actual finished product from a PDF um, to, to the best of my ability. Today I got here and I was able to see the works in person for the first time. And I was also uh, very influential in deciding what would be my juror's choice award and what would be best in show. And what was your Juror's Choice Award that you got to choose? My Juror's Choice Award was a photograph. It was by Mikhail Owuma, who's a local photographer who uses his engineering background to create these concepts of the black body as these cosmo co cosmolic, um, eternal figures. And he looks at that um, to kind of um, combat the different violent stereotypes of the black body being, um, you know, destroyed and um, black pain and things, different things like that. I'm Jared here at PCTV, and we're here at the Dollar Bank Rivers Arts Festival with artist Jim Kozak. Okay, and so, this is your first time at this festival? Or? No, I was here 50 years ago. 50 uh, years ago, yeah. wow. So, what brings it. you back now? Uh, I got a notice and I thought, 
yes, I'll try a couple pictures to get them in here, and thankfully I was accepted, and this okay. is the piece right so here. So this one right here? Yeah. And so where do you draw your inspiration from for your art? I'm sorry? Where do you draw your inspiration from for your art? Uh, I was walking through Key West, and this okay. fella was sitting on his porch, looking very much like he does there. Yeah. And I asked if I could take his photograph, and he just shook his head, very much the same as he is here. And I did, and eventually I put the painting together and uh, yeah. was appreciative. Yeah. So are you originally from Pittsburgh? Originally, yes, from yeah. South Hills. Presently, okay. I live in Latrobe, next to St. Vincent's. Okay. Oh, okay, so you're still local, you're close by. Yeah. Okay, and what do you hope for the future of the, the Resorts Festival? Uh, just having it continue to grow. Okay. And next year, I'll try to get in like at least three yeah. pictures. Yeah. So. Well, I appreciate it. There were two islands, Murano and Burano. This one was done in Burano, which is noted for its lace work. And they have, uh, their buildings are in beautiful pastel colors, and each building is a different color. And as I wandered around, the sun was setting, and the mood struck me, and I was looking at various alleyways. And this one, I was going down, and it just it was very evocative to me as to whether or not it was moody, what was going to happen, you could imagine, was it uh, a danger, was it welcoming, uh, it just said so many things to me that I uh, took many snapshots and brought them home and I have many pictures of Verano but this was the one that I painted first just really uh, spoke to me. Yeah, it's very beautiful. Is this the first piece that you've entered into the festival? No, uh, I think it was in 2000 and maybe it was 15 or 16, I entered another piece. I did a series of photographs and paintings of uh, the uh, county fairs in western Pennsylvania mm -hmm. and I did a painting of a lemonade stand and I entered that one and it was accepted in the nice. festival so I had another painting in the festival. Great. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Can you tell me a little bit about your work that you have here at the Arts Festival? Well, you can see this is in response to all the uh, mass casualties that we've been having in this country and sort of my response to the lack of reasonable gun control. And um, I'm also a Red Cross disaster responder, okay. so I respond to mass casualties as a mental health worker. So I kind of, uh, you know, have a, a seat right there to see what's going on, and I just this is my response. A child, it's the size of an eight-year-old child, covered with over a thousand bullets. Wow. Can you tell me about the medium that you use to create the art? Well, this, is a, this would be a uh, mixed media. Those are real bullets. They are not loaded. I reloaded them all without gunpowder, so mm -hmm. they're not live. And, you know, on a mannequin perched on, a, and on an actual primary school seat, because they said Sandy Hook, this is like the children who were murdered. The title of the piece is Assassination of Innocence. And so uh, it's just my, my feelings about it. How long did it take you to create that piece? Um, several months because, you know, to reload each single bullet and then to put it together, um, you know, and conceptualize the piece, find the right uh, mannequin on which to build it. Right. I was talking to your husband and he said that you've had this piece of art in your house for a while and that it was kind of strange to bring it out here to yeah, a is. display. Because I would walk by every day coming yeah. and say hello and uh, <laughs> so and now here. 
the child sits. Yeah. And I hope it evokes some emotion. When people see it, they sort of go, it's beautiful but disturbing. And I think that's kind of the state of where we're in. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about your pieces here. Sure. So um, these pieces are part of a series of prints that I've been making using the images of my daughter as reference. Um, they are linoleum block prints. So I start with a photographic reference, then I transfer the image to the block, and then cut away anywhere that I want to have print white, and leave the remaining surface to have ink roll over that and print black. Um, to me, these prints are a lot about watching the passage of time as I see my daughter grow up and how that kind of marks the passage of time in my own life. Um, is this a type of artwork that you do, like is this your main type of medium? Yeah, so I work primarily in print media. Um, I actually am a Cleveland-based artist and I work at a shop called Zygote Press, which is a cooperative print studio. And did you create these pieces for the festival or? No, so you... these are part of like an ongoing body of work that um, I started shortly after my daughter was born, I was just really inspired by how beautiful she was and watching her engage with the world. Uh -huh. Like, just, you know, the way that she looks at things and touches things and has her own kind of interior existence. Right. Um, so I started making images from photographs of her in 2017, or 2016 actually, like right after she was born. Um, and these are from that series. Okay, and uh, what would you like viewers to take away seeing your artwork here? You know, it's really one of the things that I love about being at an event like this and getting to people, getting to see people look at my work is I can ask them, like I, I get to talk to them about it. Right. And um, I'm always interested in the range of responses that I hear. So sometimes people say, oh, it's really creepy to me and I like that. Or they'll say, Oh, you know, I have one image that I did of my friend's kid where he's in a cozy cube, like the Fisher Price toy, yeah. and really respond to that strongly. So, like, oh, I remember my kid had one of those, and it like they get a little misty. Like it makes them right. think about being parents and their kids that are grown up. So, um, I'm not necessarily hoping that somebody gets something specific out of it, except that I want them to have a personal connection with it, and I love learning about how it vibrates differently for different people. Well, awesome! Thanks so much. All right, so how do you feel winning this award? Um, amazing. It was completely, yeah. completely unexpected. Okay. Like, with the work that's here, too, like, actually unreal. Extremely happy. And so where'd you find the inspiration for this piece right here? Um, this piece, it was part of, like, a little series that I was working on. Um, it's called Evening Hours. There's five other photos that are part of it. And it was all about, like, summer childhood and like nostalgia and I was really kind of trying to capture like suburban summer and like the feeling of that and then yeah so that was one of the six. Is that a main piece of your art you try focusing on your childhood and just that, it, those good feelings that come from that? It was for a time yeah. and it's, it is, does come, come kind of naturally to me when I'm taking photos you know since I've worked in that before Yeah. but I mean I wouldn't say it's like something that I particularly focus on. And so, like being an artist, that's something you always know you want to do, or is this something new for you? That oh yeah, definitely. definitely. Really? Well, I'm a photographer in the, in the whole world, really. Do you come from a family of artists? No, not at all. Really? Not and so, and so this, this is your first time at this festival, right? Yep. Your session. Wow. Wow. And so, and you're locally based in Pittsburgh? Yeah, I'm based well in a really small town near here. Okay, what town? It's called Avella. Avella. I never heard of it. You seem genuinely surprised when you got yeah, the yeah, award. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was. My face was probably white. <laughs> it was? Yeah. So you had no idea? No, I mean, like, especially when I walked in and looked around some, I was like, oh, they're like crazily, you know, so much work put into some of these visual pieces for like a tiny photo like this to win. It's just and Have you ever won anything before? Um, Small awards throughout like school and stuff. Right. Yeah. And you're in college now? No, I'm not. I, I was for a brief time. Okay. So you left college to yeah. be an artist? Yeah, pretty much. That's awesome. I mean, I went to an art school, but I, I didn't have enough time to put towards my work, so. Right. Yeah. Okay, and your friend here? His name is Mason. Mason? So you're here for the fun? Oh, yeah, He's yeah. also an artist. Tag along, yeah. You're an artist too? Not in the show, but he's also an artist. Right. Yeah. 
Oh, you're an artist? Yeah, photos, graphic design, stuff like that, illustration. Yeah. And where are you from? Uh, Bella, same. Where are you? Yeah. <laughs> That's a small town. Yeah. It's an extremely small town. Yeah, yeah. we grew up together. Yeah. That's great. I'm a medical illustrator, and um, so I entered a piece with uh, science and medicine. Science. On the, uh, literally remember me with neurons. And how did you create this? Is this paint or? So this actually started as a 3D model of a neurons, and okay. I wanted to branch um, to branch the two media that I use, which is really digital and traditional. And I always try to bang them together and find the uh, space between. So I started out as a digital model, and then I used that as a reference to paint and oil painting. Okay. And so uh, I felt like that would. Objectivity of science and the humanistic um, approach of you know memories and how it's encoded. So, how long did it take you to create this work? Um, well, I created this piece especially for the exhibit. Okay. So when I found out about it, it was like a year and a half ago. And so, whenever they released the uh, title of the uh, exhibition, I started okay. thinking about it and like finding the model in my other work that I wanted to do the Peggy on to bring the two media together. Right. That's what really my concern. And was this your first time bringing your artwork to the festival? Right, yes. Nice. What do you feel about just the entire festival, how it's grown over the time? You know, 60 years now, it's a pretty big event. So. Yeah, it is a big yeah. event. Um, I feel really lucky to be in this position. I feel yeah. like the people who came before me, I inherited such a well-loved, well-established, well-run festival yeah. that you know it was pretty easy for me to just kind of keep yeah. it going and, and tweak a few things and, and make it better. Um, I'm really excited about the music that we have this year. We're opening with India Irie on the main stage as our headliner tomorrow night, and I'm really excited about that. Um, we're going to have a big street party, which was a thing that we used to do back in like the 80s and 90s, and we kind of got away from it, but we're bringing it back. So after India Irie, there's going to be a big party in the street from 9 to 11. That's tomorrow. DJs. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Okay. Yeah, tomorrow night. Wow. Um, and then, yeah, we'll go straight through until Sunday the 16th. Yeah. And so what do you hope for the future, the years to come? You know, 60 years now, 60 years in the future. Yeah, what do you so hope for us to get? I, I hope that we continue bringing world-class art to Pittsburgh um, and that some of it sticks around. You know, a lot of the public art that you see around the city is here because of the Three Rivers Arts Festival. Yeah. It was bought by the festival and then gifted to the city. And I hope that tradition continues. I think it's really important for cities to have a you know vibrant public art program. Yeah. And um, we actually have an opportunity at the festival this year. We have a time capsule happening where you can go into this little booth and the artist Toby Fraley, he's a local Pittsburgh based artist, um, created this time capsule 2020 to 2120. So we will invite people to come in and give their memories of Pittsburgh. Toby will edit it all, seal it up yeah. for a hundred years. That's pretty, um, that's cool. So that, yeah, that's really cool. You know, we're expecting the festival to be around in 100 years. Yeah. What challenges come with just directing a festival this is magnitude? I know it's so large. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of moving yeah. parts. You yeah. know, we have a lot of artists coming from a lot of different places. And so there's yeah. a lot of, you know, transportation hiccups. And, yeah. Um, you know, things happen when you have this many artists performing over this many days. Um, yeah. We lost one of our headliners. He unfortunately had a family emergency and he wasn't yeah. able to come. So, you know, you have to kind of fill that in and, and just keep going. And, yeah. you know, those sorts of things. I have an amazing team. Flyspace Productions makes me look so, so good. They yeah. build the whole festival, yeah. maintain the whole festival. They, they're yeah. champions. Have you started to work on uh, next year's festival? Yeah, I, I start working on the festival the spring before, so I've started making inquiries for 2020 back in like March. How many, how many people do we expect uh, over the week? We usually get about 500,000 over the course of the 10 days. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks so much, Sarah, again. Yeah.